Hey there, everybody. Welcome on. It is day one of Survive to Thrive Live. If you do jump on live right now, just let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. We are going to get started here right away. These videos will stay on my Facebook page. You'll be able to come back to them if you need to. And uh, as I said in the email that went out this morning, I will be emailing you a playlist of all five videos that we're gonna go through this week on Friday. So welcome, hey Jenny. Uh, if you, again, if you're on live, please do let me know, say hi. Let me know that you can see me and hear me okay. So day one, survive to thrive live. Before we get into today's topic, which is messaging, I just want to do a quick recap of what this five days is going to be about and what it is not going to be about. So let's start with what it is not. This is not about being happy all the time. It's not about um, feeling like you need to feel in your power always. Uh, it's not about needing to feel like your life is perfect in every realm, every step of the way. It's not about losing your shit when your toddler is having tantrums all day long. It's not about um, not feeling, it's just not about not feeling good all the time. What we want to do in Survive to Thrive Live is figure out how we can feel more like we are thriving in our life than simply surviving our life. So there was a photo I posted last week that I got from Nagar Fanuni and it said something to the effect of functioning is not flourishing. And that's exactly what I wanna talk about. Just basically, if we feel like we are only surviving or if we are just functioning in our life on the day to day for extended periods of time, then we need to switch something up because we do not need to feel that way. We deserve to feel differently in our lives. And what I think is so key with this topic too is that often motherhood is represented in the media, in social media at times that you do just survive. You do just function now that you have become a mom. There's not thriving, there's not flourishing, you're just surviving. Hey, perfect, I can see your comments coming in. Thank you so much. Um, so I think we just need to get to the root of that message, which we're gonna touch on today and how it relates to other factors and realms in our life too. But knowing that there can be more in our life than just getting through it. And when we say it that way, it becomes really obvious, doesn't it? I think so. Um, so let's dive in. Hey everyone, hey Erica. Okay, so let me bring my notes up. You know if you've been with me for a little while now that mom brain is real and I can't remember that many things, so I have to make notes now. So, messaging. Day one, messaging is our theme. I think this is the topic that we absolutely have to start with. When I was planning out the next five days, this was the one that I thought really sets the tone for everything else that we are going to touch on. So today is messaging, tomorrow is motivation, specifically how that relates to bodies, food, fitness. Day three, so excited. Obviously one of my favorite topics on day three is muscles. We're going to be going through a full body strength training workout. I'll be coaching and demoing you through that. Hopefully this um, really embarrassing skateboarding injury has healed up by then and I'll actually be able to demo. Um, Thursday, day four, we're going to talk about minimizing and day five, magic, okay? So if you've got the guidebook, which I emailed out an hour ago, should be in your email, check your email. Um, the guidebook walks you through basically those five days and will give you a snapshot of what we are going to be talking about. Okay, so let's get into it. Day one, messaging. Here is what we often get messages around. Our bodies, beauty, motherhood, exercise, food, fitness, um, being a wife, being a partner, being a feminist, all of these things. Whether it has to do with our personal life, our professional life, we're constantly being inundated by messages. Here's where this can get tricky. When we are operating from a place where we are abiding by, 
abiding by those messages, but maybe they're not serving us well. Maybe they are leading us down a path that is more towards survive rather than thrive. So the example that I gave today in the email that I sent out this morning, and I'll link that list to you if you still want to get on it, but the example that I gave of a message that I was believing in, and maybe a bit subconsciously even, was postpartum and birthing and what a successful birth looks like. So if you have, again, if you've been around for a while, you know that we were planning a home birth with our almost two year old. And that ended up in transfer to hospital and emergency C-section. And that followed up with a good four to six weeks. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. A good four to six weeks of me really processing that birth um, having a lot of PTSD symptoms that I needed to work through um, and still I find myself I'm still working through that I feel at a really good comfortable peaceful place with it but there are still moments when I think back to certain places during labor the birth process postpartum that are still difficult for me so this was one message that I had bought into that the best birth for me and for Steele, our baby, was going to be at home in an environment where I felt really comfortable, really supported, um, unmedicated vaginal birth. That was the goal. That was the pinnacle. That was successful birthing to me. And even though I worked with tons of moms and I would never ever think that that was the definition of a successful birth for anyone else, whatever, however that birth went for them was perfectly successful. For them we can we often can look at someone else's situation and think that it was perfect it was wonderful everything went the way it went and it was supposed to go that way but then for me I felt like that was failure to some degree and in that guidebook again that I sent out this morning via email I was saying that one I remember so clearly one of the first thoughts that I had when we got to the recovery room after the c-section was that what are my clients and followers going to think when I start to share this birth story and tell this birth story and they know that my birth plan didn't pan out. It went completely the opposite. And for me at that point, I was feeling like it was a failure because I wound up in C-section because my body couldn't, um, it couldn't do it. It didn't do it for whatever reason. So of course that experience, that scenario was exactly what I needed because it has changed the course of how I believe and how I think about birth, but also how I coach my clients now too. So it changed everything for me. It was a message that I needed to be put in the scenario where it had to be broken down because I had a choice, right? Postpartum, I could either remain feeling so um, disheartened and hurt um, and like I was a failure, like my body didn't do the things that it was supposed to do, or I could find ways to overcome that. And I'm not saying that, um, that that's an essential step, that you have to do it in this amount of time, that you have to get over things. Not at all what I'm saying. But for me, I knew that I wanted to process and go through that period of healing in order to enjoy motherhood and in order to enjoy the experience of my body and be proud of the things that I went through. So a huge message is around birth, successful birthing, uh, the natural birth world. I try not to use that term at all anymore. Um, we can say an unmedicated birth, um, there's C-section birth, there's many different types of birth, but they're all natural and they're all beautiful. And they're all, I believe, um, exactly what we are needing in that time, even if it feels pretty horrible. So an example of another message though that I think is really common, one that again I've been through myself too, was that I needed to exercise and eat in a certain specific way in order to be a good personal trainer, in order to be fit, in order to have a body that looked athletic, I needed to strength train five days a week, I needed to not eat gluten and dairy. I needed to cut out sugar, 
basically that I needed to put all these rules and guidelines on top of myself, restrict myself in so many ways, um, be strict on myself in so many ways. So this is a message that we can be inundated with over and over again in social media, in the media. This is one that affects a lot of moms, a lot of new moms, a lot of pregnant women too. We're starting to see this more and more. Um, basically, good bodies or doing pregnancy exercise the right way. So many things we can dive down to in terms of this messaging conversation. But again, this was a message that I had to slowly but surely break down for myself too, that I didn't need to look a certain way to be successful in helping my clients that I didn't need to exercise a certain way in order to feel strong and capable in my body. I didn't need to eat a certain way in order to be healthy. This was a conversation that I was just having with my two pregnancy and beyond mamas recently about healthy eating. What even is this? What is healthy eating? And I was saying that I don't think about eating in terms of trying to eat healthy anymore because it just plays with my mind too much still. So I do not put even maybe what you would think the most basic guidelines around food for myself. I simply try always every day, every meal to eat things that I want to eat that are going to make me feel good. And that's it. End of story. All right. And in terms of the exercise, again, a lot of you have followed my journey through the last few years when I went from pre-pregnancy strength training that was pretty intense but slowly started to moderate it down a little bit more. Pregnancy strength training, really consistent three days a week of strength training. Postpartum have strength trained twice a week because that is what truly feels good to my body. Pregnancy and postpartum have been such a gift for me to um, almost be forced or challenged a little bit, pushed a little bit more to tune in and to really listen to my body, whatever that means to you. Um, but it has, it has pushed me to tune in so much more in terms of how I feel best exercising and eating. Okay. So three specific things that I want to talk about. First of all, is this making sense? Are we all on the same page? Have I lost you or we're good? Just comment. I can see your comments come up if you do post anything right now. So the first thing really is that we need to recognize these messages. We just need to be aware. We need to have some level of awareness that we are getting so many messages throughout our days in our lives. They're coming from social media the media we consume, friends, family, partners, um, your colleagues, your kids even. We have so many messages coming in. So first just recognizing that they are there, that these messages do exist, but then we get curious, okay? So step one, recognize that the message is there, is going to be there. Um, messages about our bodies, about motherhood, good moms, bad moms, good bodies, bad bodies, <clears throat> successful birthing, exercise and fitness, what it means to have a fit pregnancy. Search that hashtag and you might lose your mind. What it means to have a good body as a mom, to be a fit mom. These messages are there. We recognize that they are there. But step two, we get curious, okay? We get curious on, do we like that message? Is that a useful message for me right now at this time in my life? Is that message harmful to me? So the example of my birth and how I felt that that successful, that goal birth was going to be at home, that message was harmful for me. And we know that because I had a difficult experience that first month-ish postpartum with trying to process all the things. And of course, there were many things that were um, traumatic during that experience that were difficult to deal with too, but I really had to deal with my mindset and my expectations that I had placed on myself in order to do birth well. So we get curious, so why do you believe that message? Is it helping you? Is it benefiting your life or is it harmful to you? 
when I believed that to be a good personal trainer, a good fitness coach, that I needed to exercise a lot, it wasn't benefiting me. It truly was not benefiting me because I was achy all the time. I didn't like it. I felt a lot of guilt and shame around exercising, specifically around not exercising, which doesn't exist in my life anymore. So that was another message that I needed to break down for myself. The same with food. I have a blog post on my site about how I used to be nervous going grocery shopping when I was training lots of clients in person because I didn't want them to see what was in my basket or in my cart. What if they saw the chips, the cookies, the chocolate, the stuff that I literally eat on a weekly basis? What if they saw that stuff? Was that going to um, ruin their perception of me? Why would they trust me if they knew that I was eating this junk food? Again, another message that I needed to break down for myself because it was not benefiting me. If I'm nervous to go grocery shopping because people might see the food that I'm actually eating, we know that there's an issue there, right? So get curious on the message. Do you even like that? Do you even believe it? If you do believe it, why do you believe it? So get curious. Number one was recognize the message. Number two, get curious on how that message is affecting you and your world. All right, number three, practice. This is a tough one. So for example, early postpartum, when I was just crying my eyes out all the time, which postpartum, that's basically what happens, I think for everyone. Um, but I was just crying so much and trying to process and deal with this birthing experience, the labor experience, and Randy, my husband, who you've seen me talk about many times, he would just constantly ask me, okay, talk about it. What's coming up for you now? Um, what parts are you finding difficult to look back on? Is there anything you want to talk about? He would just constantly and consistently encourage me to talk through it, which was horrible at the time. Terrible, but extremely necessary for me because I'm the type of person that otherwise will just hold it back and hold it in. So I needed someone to keep pulling it out of me. So for me, what I think about as the process is really the processing of the message over and over again. When I was trying to just eat like a normal person, it was practicing that process over and over again. I didn't just decide one day that I wasn't going to binge on brownies anymore and then it just stopped. There were still times when I binged on sugar. There were still times when I made myself feel sick from eating too much. There were still times when I wondered if that had too many carbohydrates in it and if it would make me gain weight. Like these situations kept happening but I just had to keep practicing and putting myself in the uncomfortable scenario to start changing that message. Does that make sense? So it's not often that we just decide, you know what, I'm done with this message, that doesn't benefit me anymore, let's just move on, what's next? Although I think that's a good attitude and mindset to have at times, but often that message might keep coming back to you and you're going to have to keep pushing the comfort level to not go back to that place of comfort, to actually move in and lean into the discomfort of it and keep practicing. So keep processing all the time. And again, you keep getting curious about why you're feeling the way you're feeling, okay? So um, for me, one of the big things with practicing the process of trying to change that message for yourself is you're digging into the discomfort of the emotions that you're feeling. I'm just gonna check in with this comment in just a second. Um, but the you can go through the process over and over and over again, and it doesn't mean that you're failing. It doesn't mean that you're not changing anything. You're going through it, and that is successful in itself. So um, if it feels like you're stuck in the same place or you keep relapsing back to that place where you fall into that message again, it's just another opportunity to practice getting a step out of it and moving more towards where you want to be, okay? 
All right, so consistent reminders from yourself that you want to feel differently. I think this is huge. I'll go back to that food example about when I was really trying to eat in a more intuitive manner and not so strict and um, just weird in my brain about food a lot of the time. So I would, I would constantly tell myself, how do, how do I want to feel after I eat this message? How do I want to feel? Literally when I was eating the food, I would check in. How do I want to feel after I eat this? When I was done the meal, maybe I wanted to go back for more. Maybe I wanted to go to the cookies, <clears throat> which happens a lot and it's totally fine. I would check in with myself to say, how do I want to feel after this? And that was enough a lot of the time to bring me back into a place of actually feeling sensation in my body. Because a lot of times we can use food for many reasons. For me, it tended to be an escape from how I was actually feeling. Exhausted, tired, stressed, um, was kind of dreading the work situation at times. So food was an escape a lot of the time. And I would overeat and just not feel good after it. So the first step to breaking that for me was knowing that message wasn't working for me. I was getting curious about that message, knowing where I wanted to go instead, and then giving myself lots of reminders that I was still moving in that direction, even though I might have felt like I slipped up. So how do I want to feel? Does this food make me feel good? Those were things that I repeated a lot. Also, it's just food, which you've probably heard me say before. That was something that I tuned into a lot too, and I would maybe overeat, not feel so good, eat something that previously I had decided was not a good food, sugar often, it's just food. I would, it's just food myself, meaning that I would take the guilt and the shame, the pressure off of it. All right, so that's the big stuff that I wanna to talk to you about messaging. So number one, recognize the message and how it is actually, um, how you are getting that message into your life, okay? Number two, get curious. Is that message helping you? Is it harming you? Do you even want to believe in it anymore? And number three, practice the process. So changing the message, changing how you operate in terms of this message, it might not just be a thing that's done tomorrow. You might just have to keep practicing it. And that's okay. I wanted to give you a task Today, this is in the guidebook as well, but the task for today is to curate your social media feed. If you are scrolling through Facebook, you're scrolling through Instagram and you don't like what you see, you don't like what the message um, that's coming up for you, you don't like how you feel, how it's affecting you, unfollow. Move along. For now, it doesn't mean that you cannot go back and follow that account, that account at some time, but for now, let's just get it out of sight, out of mind, so we can actually um, start to step away from that message a little bit more. Because we're on social media often or multiple times throughout the day, I don't love to see messages coming at me multiple times a day that are not making me feel good. And yes, we can definitely deal with the, the reasons why we're being triggered by that message. Absolutely, that's a useful thing to do. I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist. I'm not gonna walk us through the steps of how to do that because I don't know how. But I think step one really truly, especially on social media, you can just get it out of your view for now and know that you can always come back, okay? So your task for today and forever and ever is to curate your social media feed so that you always feel good, always feel in your body, in your power, whenever you are scrolling through social media, there's nothing that is making you feel terrible about your body and about your life. If you are noticing stress and anxiety come up when you are on social media, be quick on the unfollow button, okay? This is something that I do constantly. Sometimes I wonder how the hell that person even got on my social media feed and why it took me so long to unfollow. It still happens, but just consistently keep doing that for yourself. Okay, let me just check this comment that came up because it looks a little bit too long for me to be able to. Let me know if you have any more 
questions or comments while we are on right now. I have to run to the dentist soon, but we got a few minutes. Okay, so Laura Amy said, I wish I had had that kind of debriefing in my postpartum. I got a lot of, you're doing the best you can, don't worry, give yourself a break, you just had a baby, but not a lot of help with the bigger feelings. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such a common experience. And depending on your healthcare provider situation in your pregnancy, you might not have any chance to debrief the birthing situation. None, really, truly. And what I think is so difficult about postpartum too, entering motherhood, you're bringing another baby into the family, is that there really is no downtime to actually get in and dig into those feelings and to be sad and upset and feel hurt. Often, we just have to slide those feelings over because there are bigger things, smaller things. The baby at hand to be working with. All your attention, especially with the newborn, is going to go into that newborn. I mean, we basically have time to physically heal, let alone to mentally and emotionally heal in a lot of cases. All right. Are we good? That everything? Okay, cool. All right, so tomorrow we're talking about motivation. Excited to dive into this one. I think it is a topic that a lot of us might just need a refresher or a reframing around. We're gonna focus the conversation tomorrow more on exercise, fitness, food, and of course the body image piece of the puzzle will come into this quite a lot too. And then day three, we're gonna do our strength training workout. I'm gonna coach you through that. But that is it for today on messaging. So just get curious unfollow your little heart out and I think that uh, you'll notice in a flash how much more <sighs> peaceful you feel with that. Okay friends, have a great day. Let me know if you need anything else. Um, I'll post the link uh, in the comments of this video for the email list in case you want to get the guidebook and then the recordings from this whole five day Survive to Thrive Live. Okay, bye bye, have a good day.